a leaked audio recording of Anthony Albanese promising to return to his socialist left faction when his prime ministership ends. Albanese positioned himself as a centrist in order to win office. He insisted his radical days were a thing of the past. But today, the Sydney Morning Herald reports that Albanese told factional figures that when he's no longer prime minister, he'll return to his left faction. The SMH reports, addressing Labor's socialist left leadership in Brisbane, Albanese declared his loyalty to the faction, promising he would return to it once his prime ministership ended. The audio recording was made at a dinner of Labor's socialist left faction, left faction in Brisbane last week. They were at Brisbane's Howard Smith Wharves on Thursday evening during the Labor National Conference. Now, last night on the program, we spoke about how Albanese took a small target agenda to the last election, but he's in fact embarking on sweeping reform across many areas fundamental to our way of life. It's therefore fascinating that he's now told a private dinner of the left faction that his heart lies with their ideology. It begs the question, who is the real Albanese? He's been telling the public he's a centrist, yet he clearly harbours a deep conviction to the hard left. During his parliamentary career, Albanese has fought hard for positions advocated by his left group, where he was a factional leader. He was opposed to privatisation of the Commonwealth Bank, also opposed to free market economics. And you can hear that in this interview with the ABC from 1995. I think that there's a need for the left to, to take a very vocal opposition to decisions such as that. I think that in general, the general free market approach to economic policy decision making uh, needs to be uh, turned around. Albanese even disagreed with Australia's free trade agreement with the United States, as the Sydney Morning Herald reported in 2004. The SMH reported that, and I quote, left-wing factional leader and frontbencher Anthony Albanese, who opposes the FTA, said Labor needed to thoroughly examine the committee's report on the deal before deciding whether to accept it. Mr Albanese said there were major concerns about the FTA's impact on pharmaceutical prices, Australian culture and manufacturing jobs. Albanese then made his case against the FTA with America in this interview. And we shouldn't be voting for the FTA unless and until uh, the Australian people can get assurances that it's in Australia's national interest. This isn't about votes, it's about doing what's right and what's in Australia's national interest. And Albanese even attacked former Prime Minister Paul Keating over his relationship with business executives, as journalist Troy Bramston wrote in May 2019. Troy wrote, and I quote, as young Labor president, Albanese often trashed Bob Hawke and Paul Keating. He repeatedly said they were out of touch. And then Troy quotes Albanese as saying, someone like Keating can put himself up as a possible Labor PM, but he is more comfortable mixing with millionaires and business executives than he is with working class people. Albanese thundered in one of many tirades. That report from Troy Bramston. Albanese also supported inheritance or death taxes. He even introduced a resolution for the Hawke government to consider them. At the time, he was the Assistant General Secretary of New South Wales Labor when he said this, and I quote, if, however, you gain your wealth through the lottery of birth, then there's no taxation and you achieve that economic influence in society through nothing other than sheer luck. I believe that quite clearly it's in contradiction to Labor's social justice objectives. And I reported on his full comments in The Australian on that topic last year. On Israel, well, you know he's been pro-Palestinian throughout his parliamentary career. But he even attended and spoke at angry, rowdy protests. You haven't seen this video before. The man holding the loudspeaker in this clip is none other than Anthony Albanese. The response of Israel has been to meet children throwing rocks with helicopter gunships, with tanks and with missiles. 
And as you know, Albanese and Penny Wong changed Labor's position on Israel this month, giving in to demands from the left faction ahead of Labor's national conference. And if you're just tuning in, the reason I'm replaying Albanese's comments is because leaked recording from the Sydney Morning Herald today reveals that Albanese has told his socialist left faction that when he's no longer Prime Minister, he'll return to them and has pledged his loyalty to the faction. That according to leaked audio obtained today by the Sydney Morning Herald. So these are the routes he's going to return to when he's no longer in the lodge, according to Albanese. And this is all relevant when you look at the sweeping reform the Albanese government is engaging in. The left-wing union, the CFMEU, wants to put a union member on the RBA board. It's a decision that opposition leader Peter Dutton has labelled absurd, and it seems the government at this point is resisting it. Labor is also giving in to union demands in some of its industrial relations reform, with a push to give unions greater access to workplaces. Now, these leaked comments by Albanese from a private dinner indicate that he does really believe the left faction ideology, but is hiding it while he's prime minister. And you have to ask, why does he feel he needs to hide his true, his true colours? Well, he clearly feels that it would be unpalatable to everyday mainstream Australians. Malcolm Turnbull, of course, did something similar as Prime Minister. He suppressed his true progressive nature. We've seen that after he left office. Now, on the topic of Israel, I can tonight exclusively reveal that the threat of further exposing the so-called mean girls shut down the left on Israel at last week's Labor National Conference. One of the only reasons the left didn't push even further on Israel at the National Conference is because the faction feared the late Senator Kimberly Kitching's husband, Andrew Landeryu, would unleash on Penny Wong, Katie Gallagher and Christina Keneally. Kimberly Kitching had dubbed these three politicians the mean girls before she passed away for how they had treated her. There was also a warning that Kitching's friend, Diana Asma, might speak too. Andrew Landeryu is supportive of Israel, just as Kimberly Kitching was. And Landeryu made it clear to several factional bosses of the right, including the Deputy Prime Minister, Richard Miles, also including another right factional boss, Jared Dwyer, that should the hard left go even further on their pro-Palestinian push, he wouldn't hesitate to stand up and speak. I understand that Lander Yu told Miles, and I quote, a man has got to do what a man has got to do. Now, while Lander Yu didn't specifically indicate he would speak about the mean girls, this is what the left feared. There was a clear fear that Lander Yu would unleash his true thoughts on the mean girls and how their treatment impacted on his late wife before she passed away. Anthony Albanese resisted holding an investigation into the claims of bullying. Penny Wong and Katie Gallagher are among his most senior ministers. Penny Wong, the foreign affairs minister, and Katie Gallagher, the finance minister. But at Kimberly Kitching's funeral, Landa Yu didn't hold back when he spoke about what he called the cantankerous cabal that had treated his wife, Kimberly, so poorly. The simple truth of it is that Kimberly's political and moral judgment was vastly superior to the small number who, who opposed her internally. And of course, there's a lot I could say about the unpleasantness of a cantankerous cabal, not all of them in Parliament, that was aimed at Kimber.